My name is Kevin O'Toole. This is Sean. My name is Kevin O'Toole. This is Sean Lowen and Kyle McConaughey, and we will be discussing virtual file systems and polymorphism in file system implementations. So, as a user, when you want to access a file, you usually want to either open, close, read, or write to the file. And depending on how the file system is structured, um, this operation might be a little bit different, but you as a user might not know exactly what to call. So you just do the open, close, read, or write, and you let the virtual... Fuck. Take <laughs> 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 okay. two. Okay. Hello? My, uh, Hello, my name is Kevin O'Toole. This is Sean Lowen and Kyle McConaughey, and we will be talking about virtual file systems and polymorphism in file system implementations. So, you as a user, when you are trying to access a file, you probably either want to open, close, read, or write to the file. And um, depending on the file system, the actual command will be a little bit different. Um, but if you don't know what type of file system it is, then you don't know exactly what command to call. However, a virtual file system allows you to just call the open, close, read, or write command. And the virtual file system first figures out what type of file system you're dealing with. And then it can find the appropriate command. So if you want to open a file, it will figure out what type of file system it is, figure out the specific command needed to open up that file, and do it for you. The virtual file system does this uh, by using metadata, and metadata is exactly what it sounds like. It's data about data. Metadata uh, gives you information about a given file in a system. So one particular type of metadata is contained in a superblock, and a superblock is a structure that the virtual file system requires every single file system on an operating system to provide it. And that was a lot of systems. And moving on. We're talking about, <laughs> oh my god, OK. OK. Can we start over? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's all good. While we're at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Kevin O'Toole. This is Sean Lowen and Kyle McConaughey, and today we'll be talking about virtual file systems and polymorphism in file system implementations. So, as a user, when you're trying to access a file, you either want to open, close, or read or write to the file. Um, and in order to do this, you have to send a specific command depending on the file system in order to open up that file or close the file or whatever. Um, however, if you don't know what the file system is, then you don't know the exact command to send. Fortunately, a virtual file system allows you to just send the open, close, read, or write command, and it takes care of the rest for you. A virtual file system first figures out what type of file system you're dealing with, and then it discovers the exact command that it needs to send. So if you want to open up a file, it figures out the correct command to open up the file in that file system, and then sends that command open for you. The virtual file system is able to do this because it uses metadata. And metadata is exactly what it sounds like. It's data about data. The virtual file system asks each particular file system on the computer to provide it with information about how that file system operates. The uppermost example of this is the superblock. Uh, the most relevant bit of this code is the structure in the bottom right. It, that structure contains pointers to every single relevant operation that the file system provides. So if the virtual file system wanted to open a file in that particular file system, what it would do is look at the super block, which it mandates from every single file system, 
and look for the struct super operations and then look for the open close read write whatever command in that super block and call it. In addition to the metadata which is contained in the super block, there's also metadata associated with every file. Uh, each file has contained in it the information in it and a name, but in addition to that, there are a number of parameters that the file has that's called its metadata. Each file has, for example, read and write permissions for each user. Each file also has certain properties that you can mark on it, such as making this file hidden. And uh, notably, each file has a counter which tells how many hard links to it. And inside of each index node, there is this, this counter which, which tells you how many places the file exists in. And we'll see later that this will be useful because when you want to delete a file, this counter will be decreased and tell the file not to entirely delete itself if there exists another place that the file exists. And as a general rule, although it, it may be a file may exist in many places, but it is always true that there is only one index node per file. The third most important type of object that the virtual file system uses to maintain the different file systems on any given operating system is called a dentry. And a dentry is what you get when you combine the words directory and tree. Uh, the dentry is what allows the virtual file system to link together the different inodes. So for instance, if you were in the directory user slash bin slash home, the dentry objects represent the different parts of that path name. Uh, there are four dentry objects in this particular example. The first one is the slash for the root dentry. The second one is user, the third one is bin, and the fourth one is home. Uh, so each dentry object has several bits of data that are relevant. The it has a name so that the virtual file system can distinguish it from other dentry objects. It has a pointer to an inode, which is what allows the virtual file system to trans transit the directories. It has uh, a link to the parent entry, and it has links to children entries, assuming that the inode that it is associated with is a directory. It's interesting to note Going back to the uh, comments about inodes having a counter, which lists the number of hard links uh, that are associated with that particular inode, the dentries can point to a given inode along multiple paths. So if you delete a path from one particular uh, path, it is not necessarily true that the entire file is gone. And operating systems actually use this to ensure that multiple copies, multiple paths exist to critical data. So you're probably wondering, why do I care? What does this mean to me? A lot of you out there probably have uh, dual boot computers. So you're running Linux and Windows. Um, and you may know that from Linux you can access all the files on your Windows partition. And you don't have to do anything special to access those files. You just open up a file, close a file, read a file, write a file. And that's all because of the virtual file system. Um, whether you're dealing with files in the Linux partition or the Windows partition, it's the same command. That's also why it's called polymorphic. Because you send one command and depending on the file system, it'll just take care of it for you. Even if you don't have a dual boot computer, if you, you know, load up a flash drive, the same thing. There's a file system on the flash drive, and the virtual file system will just take care of it for you. So basically, it just makes your life really easy.